A very good day to you. Welcome to Hamun Manyore's channel. From wherever you're watching us, from Kenya, East Africa, Africa, or any part of the world, my name is Jadiel Kabir. I'm joined by Hamun Manyore for today's political conversation. It's a big day, Prof. A big day, BBI. BBI. Gone. Gone, as in? Is it gone now, completely, based on Supreme Court's Someday, finding? one day. That's what Uhuru Kenyatta said. Ah. And Raila said, BBI is on just half time. After him. Yeah. And that's exactly what has been confirmed today. The Supreme Court has put it that it did not follow the right procedures, the yes. BBI, terming yes. it unconstitutional. Currently, right now, Deputy President William Bruto's team is celebrating. How would he be celebrating? What is he celebrating? That BBI is gone. Should he be gone celebrating? That's a what to agenda half time you celebrate. Mm. This is just half time. Why would you say it's half time? Because now we cannot implement the Building Bridges Initiative maybe until the elections are done. The people who didn't want BBI would have been happy if the courts today had affirmed mm. the decision of the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. Namely, that the people of this country cannot change their constitution. Okay. So right now, that, that that wasn't the case. The basic structure doctrine yes. was. Uh, that is the only the thing that, that was up for determination today. There was nothing else. Even the uh, who initiated it, President yeah, those are, Kenyatta. Those are small matters. Now, when you look at the basic structure document, mm. doctrine, does this mean that later in the future, as you're saying, we're going to see BBI back, and that the Court of Appeal messed us up, thinking that we cannot change yeah. the constitutional yeah. with so the a waste of, It was a waste of valuable time for Kenyans. Mm. Yeah, because you see. The BBI thing mm. is something that is from the handshake. And uh, Uhuru and Raila wanted to cure mm. some of the problems that afflict this country, over which people lose life senselessly mm. in every election year. Mm. Property is lost, in which we lose billions of shillings, sometimes even in every day. So we were trying to cure that. And that opportunity has, was squandered by the High Court and the Court of Appeal, mm. basically. Right now, see Because if they had just said, there are some things here that are not constitutional, go back to the drawing board, rectify them, the referendum would have been done a long time ago. Does this mean that, you, that you're happy with the ruling that was made by uh, the Supreme Court, the way it was delivered, how C.J. Martha Kome and her bench yeah. delivered it? Yeah, I, that's how I go. I, that's, that's what I like. I, I like when I listen to Njoki Ndongo and I listen, I listen to Martha Kome. Mm. And I say, this is how a court ought to deliver judgment and any ruling. Mm. In a simple, straightforward case. I said these things so many times and the people hit at me. I said you must just isolate the issues. What are the issues? Yeah. It begins simply with the fact that you cannot stop Kenyans from amending their constitution, which is what the High Court was saying, which is the Court of Appeal was saying, which was wrong. Uh. It was as simple as that. CJ and it has taken just simple English uh. from CJ Mother Kome uh. to tell Kenyans that, look here, there's no other way of looking at this thing. She said Absolutely. we must look at our history so that we not bring foreign stuff in. Yeah, it's, it is a simple thing. Look, look at what she said. She said uh, that the most important thing is for there to be a balance of rigidity and flexibility Correct. in the constitution. Yes. How can we create this balance? It's already been created. Uh, we come from a past where our constitution was so mutilated you couldn't... You, there was no way they two look the same. Mm. The constitution we had before 20, just around 2010 and the constitution of independence time, 1960-63 there. Mm. They were different documents. Mm. It had been changed and completely discolored and disfigured, mutilated. Yeah. So we said, we cannot allow this. Mm. We cannot allow this. One of the changes was to turn Kenya from a multi-party democracy to a de jure one-party system. Mm. You cannot have a political party. And it was done one afternoon. Yeah. Mwai Kibaki and Charles Njonjo, just like that, in, I think in a day or so, one afternoon. Uh. So we say, no, we can't allow that. But at the same time, we said, it will be foolish to have a constitution you can't change. Because this is a living document. Oh. Times change. Things change. What do we think are so important to us may not be important to you people young tomorrow. Mm. And so, even you, some of the things you think will be a matter of death to your children will be rubbish. Oh. So, so for, to that extent, we say, 
we cannot allow people to mess with our constitution in the manner in which Kenyatta one and Moi messed with our constitution. Mm. But we also said, hey, hold on. Let's not use our past to enslave ourselves to Okay? Yeah. Let's also be free enough to be able to change our constitution. Mm. So that is a balance that chapter 16 uh, kind of gives you. Would you agree then with Ruto's allies who are coming and saying, even if we have said that our constitution is not, it doesn't, the basic structure doctrine doesn't apply to us, later on in the future, we need to look into it and, and apply it in Kenya. Would you agree to that? Uh, it's a very difficult question to answer. All I know, we should have learned from this BBI. That although there are safeguards which have been affirmed today by the Supreme Court, there is need to look more. Are those safeguards enough? Mm. Are they really enough? Uh. Perhaps they are not enough. Okay. Now that we know, they, they may not be enough. So, I don't know who will come first. Mm. The person who will who'll come and uh, bring back the BBI mm. referendum... Yeah. Or the person who will come with a new safeguard. I don't know who will come first. Okay. But both of them must will come certainly. If, if Raila gets the presidency and they implement the BBI thing, mm. the other people should come and introduce more safeguards so that in the future, uh -huh. we don't allow people a field day. Okay. Yeah. Look at the finding though. The president uh, shouldn't initiate uh, the Building Bridges Initiative. It should go through the popular initiative way or through parliament. When you look at this finding, we have, see, we have Justice Njoki Ndungu coming and saying the president did not initiate it. And even if he did, it is wrong, not wrong for him to do so because he's a democratically a Kenyan. And then we have CJ Martha Kome coming out and saying he initiated it. It is wrong. Now, this question of interpretation, Kenyans are getting confused. How can we deal no. with it? You know, sometimes when you listen to learned men and women and educated Kenyans, you wonder, how can they fail to see simple things like this? Ah. The popular initiative is not so much who initiates. Mm. It is a pathway. Oh. It's a pathway open. Look here. The constitution says this. You people have elected members of parliament. Mm. They will do things like amending the constitution mm. from time to time. Mm. Some of the amendment, of course, may come back to you mm. in a way of referendum. But supposing you want to amend the constitution, you approach your member of parliament, he doesn't listen. Mm. Are you locked out? No. Mm. Popular initiative is a path to anybody. And in Joking Dungu, correctly put, popular by way of numbers, mm. the 1 million signature, the 25% mm. of the blah, 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 blah yeah. majority in the referendum. That is what is popular about it. But to me, I see it as a pathway. Mm. Because why I'm saying that I can sense a lot of cheapness on the part of people who are saying the president shouldn't mm. is, if it is a question of the president, why can't he just say, Manyola, do it for me? So, 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 oh. so you look, look at how cheap it is. So it, is it is so cheap. But these other things, these other things, the president cannot do anything about them. Mm. The, the process, he can't just change it. But in terms of a document to be given to Manyora to move around with. Mm. <sighs> so you find Justice Njokim Dungu. She's the one, the one, one who correct, makes sense. Saying numbers instead of yes. who. And it's not who, it's a pathway open for you to change the, anybody. Mm. And the numbers, the popular part of it is the numbers, the people you must convince mm. for this thing to see light of day. Those are the numbers. That's what is popular about it. When the others, uh, the other change is in parliament. When you listen to you convince fellow parliamentarian and everything passes. Mm. And the only thing is it touches on those protected areas mm. in, in 255 one, mm. then it goes for referendum. And that people engage with it only at that level of the referendum. But but even then, uh. we are saying there's still something popular about it. Okay, Justice Lenaola called it absurd, that what the president, the route through the president, president initiating it. Mm. Uh, we saw Justice Ohuko also saying you cannot run with the hare and hunt with the hounds. Yes. Uh, what would you say has led to this situation? Someone was saying the Attorney General should be forced to resign because Why? of this situation. He should have interpreted that this is how things would have no, gone. No, you can't, you can't. This is an opinion. Seven men and women today were, given an op were giving an opinion. That is quite different from what the other seven plus five, I mean, 12 judges. Yeah. With the basic... A, a judgment or a, a ruling is an opinion. Ah. Yes. That's why whenever there's a higher court, mm. you can get different op opinions. 
How can you fold the attorney general? But I would afford, I would uh, fold the attorney general. Because some of these simple things you should have seen. Which simple things? There are so many simple things. Hiccup. Some of them appearing in this case, some not. Mm. Uh, like who, 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 who was the promoter? Juneta mm. and Dennis Waweru came in rather too late. Okay? Yeah. Although Njoki Ndungu showed that really that is not the case. Uh. She showed that uh, the document from the steering committee and the document Juneta and Waweru presented to IBC were, uh, had major differences. Yeah. So, but a much more careful attorney general mm. would have known that. A much more careful uh, attorney general would have. Uh, prosecuted some of the issues mm. in a much better way and earlier. Mm. A much more careful attorney general mm. would have looked at the composition of the high court judge bench mm. and pointed out certain people ought not to have been on that bench. Oh. Some of them were the judges President Uhuru Kenyatta had not had refused to appoint. Yes. And they were on that bench. Inter Why didn't the attorney general point out that and argue that they ought not to be on that bench. Mm. So there are many things that Attorney General. Attorney General Charles uh, Kihara is a rather dull Attorney General. <laughs> I wouldn't keep him uh, as my agent. So not agree not for a day, not even for an hour. You'd agree that he should resign now. Yeah, he should just go home. When you look at not this, because of this BBI. This BBI is a, is a big score to the Uhuru and the Raila. Mm. Yeah, so why would he resign? We'll talk about that political angle uh, later but when you look at the second schedule speaking about the introduction of the 70 constituencies this is actually one of the two things that let the bbi go down who do you say would you say it's a big loss to kenyans because as you look at the azimi your side they're saying the during their campaigns we're talking about introduction of constituencies that would be beneficial in terms of bringing cdf down to the people uh, when you look at it now would you say kenyans have lost because of bbi and this part of the second schedule no to the extent that no referendum is being done today mm. one would would hope that by the time there's a referendum on the cards mm. they will have sorted out this issue of constituencies okay. in a manner that will not offend the, the opinion of the supreme court and of the other judges mm. If you asked me, there's nothing serious about what they were saying. Nothing when, when it comes to nothing. Second, Absolutely nothing. second schedule. Nothing. And these things have been uh, prosecuting them very well in media and elsewhere. Because the work of the IBC as protected for that kind of independence mm. is in, 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 in doing what they are doing. Mm. But the argument could also be raised as that independence can be suspended or can be even be removed completely mm. through a referendum. Okay. Simple, simple, simple as that. Simple. When you listen to someone like Kithure Kindiki now speaking about president's immunity, just today, immediately yes. after after the ruling was was made by the, by, by the Supreme Court, saying yes. that we will hold them accountable. People that use monies of the government, PSS, CSS, that pushed this drive. Mm. How would you say this would? turn out politically for both D.P. Ruto and Azimio's side. To the handshake brothers, you have wasted our four years as a nation. You have wasted our, our money as taxpayers of Kenya in an illegal process. Now we want to tell you that it is not enough that your illegal decision has been nullified. That is not enough. We are going to hold you accountable for the misuse of public funds. And I want to announce to the several servants who have authorized illegally and unconstitutionally for the expenditures under the BBI illegal process that Article 226, Part 5 of the Constitution requires that a public officer who authorizes the use of public funds against the provisions of the law and the constitution should be held personally responsible, whether they are in office or out of office. Kwa hivyo nini watu ambao muko kwa maserikari, nini ma PSS, nini ma CSS, mumetumika na wale matapeli wa handshake kufunja sheria ya Kenya, kutumia pesa ya uma, nje ya katiba, Sasa ni jukumu lenu kujitayarisha 
kurejesha pesa ambayo imetumiwa kinyume na sheria na kinyume na katiba these, these are coming from 20 people those are petty things it's, it's not a it's not a, a litigation you can pursue first of all you must know ultimately this thing can only point to uhuru kenyatta we agree yeah the president yeah it is the president who initiated the whole thing yeah and therefore all expenditure must be traced to that yeah okay there is no way mm. anybody that released that funds we don't know how much could have refused to release the funds if he's directly asked to do so by the president in a manner that i'm sure mm. is not in violation of the laws mm -hmm. okay yeah so then you'll have to sue the president mm. and now you argue and it has been proved today you cannot sue him while in office so when do you sue him after he leaves office now listen carefully it is agreed almost everywhere that the moment you touch a retired president you will offend very many people and very many sensibilities sensitivity mm. it's very difficult to go after a retired president mm. unless he was engaged in atrocities in other words, you are going to look bad yourself. Mm. Chiluba, Chiloba, 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 Ch one of those names, yeah. some short man <laughs> from Zambia. Yeah. Even uh, ho was haunting KK, Kenneth Kaunda, former president of Zambia, yes. and even calling him a non Zambian, that he was not even a Zambian. Mm. Look, look at that. <laughs> and people told me you are stupid. Uh. You cannot follow President Kibaki where he is and try to harass him. Yeah. People will beat you up. You cannot follow Uhuru <laughs> in Ishaweri uh, and tell him that you spend some 200 million. Uh, people think you are mad. So okay. these people must stop cheapness. Cheapness from... This is cheapness. What does this mean for Azimio's side right now? The plot was, if BBI sails through, uh, they will be able to negotiate well when it comes to the Prime Minister's position, yes. Deputy Prime Minister's position from their side. Uh, what does this mean for them? You know, you must ask yourself, what is the best that could have happened that would please Raila and Uhuru mm. today. Yeah. So then somebody will argue the BBI would have been resurrected. Yeah. The, the Supreme Court will have quashed the findings of the High Court and the Court of Appeal mm. and the regular allowed to continue. Yes. Fine. And that's why the other side is celebrating? Yeah. So then ask yourself, mm. if that were the case, would we have had an, a referendum between now and the election? Not really. No. Would we have had? No. When would we have had most likely? Post-elections. Post-election. The ruling today or the judgment today, mm. what does it indicate will happen? That the referendum will take place. Later. Later. Ah. So. <laughs> so it's basically telling yeah. Raila supporters that later on... Whether, whether they, 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 they allowed, they disallowed all this, they allowed all the seven grounds of appeal. Mm. Or allowed five as they did today and... Uh, uh, disallowed too. Mm. There's no way you could hold an, a referendum today mm. before the elections. So it's just about right now deep inside getting bragging rights. The, that br the bragging again is no is to show either you are you are just like a child excited after seeing <laughs> a lollipop because <laughs> at the core of this judgment today was whether or not there can be a referendum. Mm. To change the constitution. That is all. There was nothing else. Uh, the question was, can we as Kenyans or can't we mm. change our constitution through a referendum? Okay. The answer was clear today. Yes, you can go ahead and change your constitution. So the ruling was on the doctrine of Yes, yes. Structure. There was nothing else. Nothing all these else. other side issues. There's mm. nothing. There wasn't anything else. But for posterity, mm. there was the question of whether you could sue the president. Not had, that has nothing to do with the BBI. With the BBI. But it was an important question for determination. Okay. But all the others, uh, they have, they are neither here nor there. So take home for you, there is no winner, there is no loser. I, I think the, the winner is, a, the, the, is, is Wanjiko. So the people of Kenya to me, I was very sad actually mm. that the High Court and the uh, Court of Appeal, mm. made of learned men and women, could in their right mind tell Kenyans, you cannot amend this constitution. I was mm. very worried. Okay. But today... I'm a happy man, mm. and so are many Kenyans, I think, mm. that we can and we will amend our constitution mm. following the laid down procedures 
as provided for and as enshrined in our constitution. You see, that is even Musalim Mudavadi has said the same thing. They said it's a win for the people. It's a win for the, the Supreme Court has over It's a win for the but people. But by, by, <laughs> by a win for the people, different people mean different <laughs> things. Yeah. So absolutely. some people are, you see, those who are celebrating, I ask them. Yeah. You've been talking about mutilating the constitution mm. and celebrating the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Mm. What is there to celebrate in this one? Because you are saying the constitution is protected. Nobody can play around with it. Yeah. But the Supreme Court has told you, Kenya will change their constitution. So what are you celebrating about now? Oh. What should we expect in the near future now? Should we expect things go back? If Raila wins, you can be sure in the first 90 days, the move to change the constitution will have kicked off. Mm. And the latest by February, March, the constitution will be... Because they are going to move to the... If they have advisors. Mm. If they have... Advisors. They are going to move to the Supreme Court for advice. Okay. Following this judgment, mm. will we start the process again? Or will we simply expand the things you have found and constitutional mm. from our bill and then proceed with our bill? Okay. Or, at the very least, do we need to do another set of signatures? But even if they don't go to the Supreme Court, with all the state infrastructure and everything, mm. what's so difficult getting, getting signatures in, 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 <laughs> in, 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 in a, or less than a month's time? Okay. Is there any problem? No problem. For so them. they will have come up with a new bill, Bring Avoid the pitfalls that, 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 that were identified by the Supreme Court. to initiate the process. Yeah, yeah who to initiate it? should give it to Manyora, yes. not even... Because if you give it to Junette Muhammad, yeah. somebody else will say... Yeah. And this, this is why these guys don't think. You give it to Junette Muhammad, some say... Parliamentarians have their own avenue in Parliament. So this is unconstitutional. Okay. They should give it to me. Okay, I'm Tata. <laughs> hey, or okay, I'm Tata and Manyora. We yeah. take it. Yeah. yeah. It's that simple for It's you. so simple. Going back to court, getting interpretation. And that's where we come back to the Attorney General. Mm. Let me tell you. As we wind up. As we wind up. One of the problems I've identified in this country mm. is our reliance on lawyers. When you have a process, especially of a legal nature, mm. that involves some legal, some law a bit, mm. we pump lawyers there. Mm. Mis big mistake. Because there's no room for thinking outside the box. You need to have people like Manuela there sitting and telling lawyers, how about that? Okay. Lawyers don't think the law. Lawyers interpret the law. Lawyers mm. draft the law. Lawyers don't make the law. Yeah. So I have always argued, if you have something as big as this, mm. hold a conference with the lawyers, with whatever they are coming up with. Let other people be there to listen. Mm. They are in a room. We listen to them making their presentation uh. and we, we we tell them things the things we will tell them mm. are the same things that will be raised in in litigations tomorrow okay you get what i'm saying yeah simple and clear Very simple. well thank you so much for tuning into today's political conversation a critical analysis of the building bridges initiative ruling by the supreme court uh, we keep it simple we keep it truthful and yes we keep it unbiased until we do have these conversations again have yourself a lovely rest of your day